All right, so we're looking at a rectangle that has a height of L1, a width of L2, and there's some sort of process of strain that increases it, so it's an extra delta L1 in the vertical direction and an extra delta L2 in the horizontal direction. We want to find out what's the strain on the diagonal. Well, we can start by considering what is the length of that diagonal. <clears throat> Before stretching, it's just going to be by Pythagoras, the square root of L1 squared plus L2 squared. Then we could look at how does that corner move. That corner is going to move a little delta L1 squared plus delta L2 squared square root. Now, you might be thinking, well, isn't that really the final diagonal length? And, of course, you would be correct. So let, let's just zoom in a little bit here. And if we take those away we can look to see what's going on with that true diagonal, which would be L1 plus delta L1 squared plus L2 plus delta L2 squared. Square root of that unit would be the entire system. So the correct solution would be LD1 minus LD divided by LD. And the approximate solution is the delta LD, that little green component over LD, the yellow one. Now, it's an approximation. I told you that. So the way we can check it out is we can look at small strains. So let's make the sides big so that our numbers are small. So maybe it's 1,000 millimeters by 1,500 millimeters. And then we'll plug in little values of delta L and look to see what numerical values do we get. So here we go. We're going to draw this axis. And then using the approximation solution, we can look at for small values, of course, we're going to get small strains, and up to 10 millimeters, we get almost 008 strain. That's our approximate solution. I did the same inputs and did the exact solution, which is the orange line. And as you can see, there is a difference, but the difference is very, very small. And that's why it's okay to use that approximation.